you know. Um, yeah, it's a vibe. Firstly, welcome to the Crate Cast or Crate Conversations. Welcome to our show. Thank welcome you. Welcome to Bali. Yes. Uh, first time here or been here before? Second time. Second. I love it. I uh, want to move here. <laughs> please do. Don't please, tempt me. Please do. It's a great place. I highly encourage it. Um, I moved here from Sydney about six, seven years ago for the sole intention to focus time making music. Yeah. Um, so if you have a plan like that to make music or to, to do something where you want to put a lot of time into, this yeah. is definitely a place that can reward you with not feeling pressured because um, I, I find that being a Sydney boy and maybe yourself, are you a, a Gold Bris- Coast. Goldie? Yeah. I used to live in Labrador for about six months. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Cool place. Cool place is in Gold Coast. Cool place. <laughs> yeah, Goldie is dope. <laughs> Goldie is dope. Um, yeah, so welcome to the show. Thank um, you. We've never met, so this is our first time. Cool. So this is Wicked. Yeah. Um, you played at uh, my party, Escape, um, which I'm a co-founder of, and I, I wasn't able to be there because I'm obviously in early stage father mode. How exciting. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Parched. <laughs> Very. Thank you, Richard. Oh, that's amazing. So, second time in Bali. Yes. Um, DJing. And how did you – let's probably start with the DJing side because you also got some releases or you're signed to – Club Sweat. Club Sweat. Shout out to, to the fam there. Sweat it out fam, the sweaty fam. Mm-hmm. So, t Tal, let's go. <laughs> yeah. So I would like to find out a little bit more because we've never met. You, you've got like all this space now in this safe place to talk about uh, all things music, all things DJing and anything else that you just want to vent. So let's start with DJing. Yes. How did you, you mention radio school, singing with mum, right? And and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that as well because I want to know what kind of music she was into yeah. and how that might influence or will influence some of the music you're going to be doing. Um, Working around music a lot with Radio School, now you do your mixes. Where can we find your mixes, by the way? You can find my mixes on SoundCloud under Talina. Talina. Um, But the URL would be Talina Music. Talina Music. Yeah. And how often are you doing your mixes up there? Oh, I just actually did one last week for the first time in two years because obviously we don't want to talk about the C word. Yeah. So No C bombs in here. Yeah, no, but obviously, you know, the past two years have been crazy and I just have never had the time. It's not even been on my mind. And now that everything's getting back into it and whatnot, I was like, I need to do my mixes again because – you know, people want to hear it. People want to hear what I play at my shows and I always talk at the start of my mixes so it's a little bit of a way to connect with everyone as well and let them know what I'm up to where they can catch me at my shows and when music's coming out and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I just really, uh, uploaded one last week to SoundCloud and it's episode 11. I actually had um, Little Fredo on the last one and a few other homies on all the other ones. So, yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. I usually do the first hour or half an hour, then I get someone to jump on these days because I want to, sh- you know, show talent around town really. There's so much. Yeah. Back at home. Show me. I love it. I love hearing about homegrown talent. And I also just love the idea and hearing and knowing that people, you know, there's an, there's another wave and generation of people coming through that really just love the music love the industry, love the people yeah. and these little collectives and, and, and friend circles. Yeah. You know, most of my friends, if not all of them, are from the industry. It's cool, hey. Yeah. and the, Like-minded. Like-minded, a lot of, lot of differences. Like in, in, yeah. if, we, if it wasn't for the love of music, we probably would have never have connected. Yeah. You know, and music is bringing us yep. together today. That's, what, that's how I think about the whole Bali trip. I'm just like, I, I get to play tunes in Bali, like – yeah. That's crazy to me because last time I came, which was about three, four, f- four, five years ago. When was 2018? Four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was here then, I was like, oh, when I come back, I hope to play in Bali. And Ask and you shall receive. Manifestation. Manifestation. So let's talk about music. Let's talk yes. about your DJing. What got you into DJing? When did you start? I started when I was actually 17. I bought decks for my birthday and um, I was just so into it because I've always loved music, you know. I've always been into dancing and um, like hip-hop dancing and stuff like that. And 
I just loved music through school. It was kind of just, I don't know, a saviour, you know, a little escape, just tunes just take you away, you know, to a better place. And, you know, um, I did choir and all that and I did piano for seven years, so I loved music. Mm -hmm. And my mum's a very good singer. She used to, you know, uh, release music back in the day, um, make albums and sing lots of... uh, Oh, how would you say, kind of like reggae. Cool. Yeah, cool, cool stuff. Yeah. Um, like island vibes, but she has a beautiful voice. And yeah, I don't know, I just, you know, I turned 17, I was like, you know what, I'm going to get some decks and I'm going to learn. And then, yeah, I had a few people show me how to like use the decks and stuff and I was watching tutorials and um, I ended up playing at nightclubs at, underage so I would take in my controller because yep. I was too nervous to learn the like the CDJs at that time and everything like that and um, with the USBs. Yeah. So I was playing on a, on a controller but then I got a gig at this club called Envy Nightclub in Broad Beach mm-hmm. and um, yeah, I was like fresh 17 and I would carry my, they'd escort me in, I'd carry my massive decks and yep. um, set up, set up the laptop. I'd play for like six hours, like R&B, EDM, electro, hip hop, trap. And then I'd pack up at 3am and go back home. Yeah. Wasn't allowed to drink, wasn't allowed to do anything, obviously, but it was yep. just funny because like, you know, security is like coming through and here I am, this little girl with this massive box, like, yep. don't look at me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I totally get it. When I started playing clubs... I started playing on a controller as well, a little Vestax unit, I remember, because I wasn't confident enough because I didn't have CDJs. Yeah, same, exactly. You're like, do I have to? Can I use mine? Yeah. (laughs) How do you feel uh, or how did you find the fact that you were playing these kind of long sets Um, because I truly feel that there's not enough people getting that experience to play that to a crowd? It's so different these days. Multi-format, multi-genre. do you think, what were some of the things you were able to learn getting that kind of experience? How to read a crowd. Mm. How to read a crowd and how to mix. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Ver- Versatility, right? 100%, you know, like actually taking song requests. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays I'm like, don't. Yeah. But back then, like obviously that's yeah. what you do when you start out and especially because I was so young and so fresh, I just wanted to just please everyone that, they wanted to hear like Justin Bieber or Martin Garrix, you know, while I'm playing, I don't know, like Biggie or something, but yeah, sure, you know, switch it up. But nowadays it's so different because obviously- Well, you've matured more as an artist, you know, and you've got a specific sound and and thing that you're trying to to, um, showcase, which is, I guess, something that's true to you and inspires you. What kind of sound, how would you say what your sound is at the moment in your (sighs) journey? At the moment, I am absolutely loving just like the underground, underground, like deep, groovy bass lines, like nice vocals. But like, I I love that solid grooves vibe as well, yeah. you know, like yeah. on a fat sound system, like on the weekend at yeah. Warehouse for your party. Man, insane. Like the sound system, I couldn't stop playing those big tunes, just a massive kick. Yeah. You know, those little spicy hats. It's got so much attitude. Yeah. You know. Um, it's understated, yeah. you know, that kind of solo groove, Dennis Cruz, yeah. you know, um, but yeah. on a big system, yeah. it punches. Yeah, you just don't want to play anything else when it's on a sound system like that. Yeah. 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 Um, speaking of solid grooves and that kind of vibe and your Club Sweat release, mm. uh, how, how, did, how, did you, how did that come about? So you started, let's probably go back to, started DJing. Yeah, so 17. I was 17 and I'm nearly 26, two weeks. Wow. So, yeah. um, nearly been playing for nine years. Yeah. That's it. Probably now because, of, yeah. Yeah. Be nine years, yeah. like two weeks, which is cool. Um, it's crazy, huh? The C word, that's two years that you just like plus two. Yeah. It's nuts. It's like it, I don't even know. I feel like it was so slow at the time mm. and now it's like, wow, mm. we're halfway to, through 2022. We certainly are. It's nuts. But yeah, no, I started DJing and then I I loved it. I was playing shows. Obviously, I turned 18, so then that was pretty wild. I were play- your friends coming when you were underage and supporting you as well? Yeah, I was awesome. friends with a lot of older people, like like two years older through school and stuff like that. So um, they would all come to my shows and I'd make so many friends through the industry and then I started to, you know, hang out with people in the industry and I just 
fell into that cool group of just like really vibey people, just so different from what I, you know, what I was into. I was, because I wasn't DJing for long at that time and just getting thrown into the deep end at the club. It's like, okay, like, do I fit in with these people? Is this where I want to be? I just love music. I don't know. Mm. I'm still in school. Mm. And then, yeah, um, DJed for like, hit about four years and I was like, if I, like, I love this so much, but like, I want to write. I want to learn how to write music. Were you music. still sort of playing piano at this stage or were you kind of... No, I did piano from like grade seven or eight. Yeah. And I did that for about six, seven years. Have you retained? Yeah, Is yeah. Is that coming back to you or you've held, held, held on to a lot of that? Yeah, of course. Like I was doing all the theory and all that as well and like competitions and stuff like that. And uh, when I started producing, I bought a MIDI keyboard straight away. I was yeah. like, I need to. Yeah. I must play the keys again <laughs> and how does that feel to reconnect yeah good i love it from a dance music perspective yeah i love it you know i, I love I, I know my chords yeah it makes everything a lot easier yeah but um i don't know ableton because I, I use ableton so Same. it's yeah it's pretty yeah. like chill on ableton and now i have the push i'm like ooh, yeah fun times and the midi keyboard just looks at me like when are you gonna when you're gonna use me yeah <laughs> I'm like oh true yeah i should use all of my equipment now but it when, goes in phases. It does. You know? It's up and down. Yeah. Some days, I, some months, I'm just like, oh, I should probably do that. And then when I when I actually get back involved with using the MIDI keyboard and my synths and stuff like that, like I spend hours. Mm. But that's what I, I feel like that's what I love about it is I just get in the zone with it so much. But then when you're so stuck into working on Ableton and just like on the computer and staring at it and working away, you really have to like set it up and have it like easy access ready to go and then you'll use it. Mm. Whereas like if it's not plugged in, I feel like you just, you won't use it. That's interesting. If the if the MIDI keyboard or if the laptop's not set up in like the studio format? No, as in like um, if if my keyboards and synths and like my push aren't plugged, yeah, yeah, if it's not plugged in and stuff, I don't, like I can't be bothered. Yeah. I just. What, what do you do? You have to pack them up? And no, it's just all the out? cords. I'm like oh, OCD yeah. with the cords. True. Like, ugh, mess. Yeah. <laughs> and back to, so you, you, you've been DJing for quite some time. Has your sound changed from what you, obviously what your sound has changed? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I started. And you found your place? Yeah, I started doing hip hop, R&B, EDM, trap, bass. And I did that for about two, three years, obviously playing in all the commercial clubs around like Gold Coast. Yeah. And then started playing in Brizzy. And then my, my goal is to play at the Met. In, yep. in Brisbane and um, I would be like a punter there, you know, I'd, I'd play my shows in the Gold Coast and I'd boost it up to Brisbane and go see like AC Slater, Chris Lorenzo and everyone playing the Coco and just absolutely love it and then drive back, back home, you know. And then I, one of the, um, I guess you could say like part owners of the Met or whatever, um, wanted to get me into play, play at the Met and all that. And it was literally, actually, no, I submitted a mix first because they were like, we're looking for DJs and they declined my mix. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, that sucks. And then... Bummed out? Yeah, I was. I was pretty sad because like, I was like, yes, this is my opportunity. Mm. And you know, you just, I just went in all guns blazing like, okay, send what a kind mix. Of, what kind of mix did you send in for it? Um, like a bassy, like... What you would bass play, house. basically. Yeah, bass house. At the time I was like in a stage of like bass. Chris Lorenzo vibe. Yeah, like yeah. night bass vibes, um, but also like love that dusky vibe as well, camel fat. It was all a bit of just everything that was just popping, you know, and like cola and all that was happening. And, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, all that stuff. So, yeah, I ended up playing at the Met and then... So you ended up getting the gig yeah, despite getting oh, yeah, bounced so, on the mix. No, yeah, so they said no to the mix or whatever and then a couple months later um, they hit me up and they're like, yo, you're actually doing really well. Well, We'd love to get you in for like a, pretty much like a headline show in, in the Coco and I was like, what? Okay, so the foot, hang, hang on, tried to just get a sort of a, a resident or a guest slot and yeah. now getting approached back yeah. saying we want you to be the like headline. Just play, play Coco, yeah, play your first. How did that feel? Yeah, it was sick. What it described that feeling like? It I couldn't believe it actually. Was it an email or a direct message? Um, I'm pretty sure it was an email. Oh no, I'm pretty sure I did open actually. Yeah. I, maybe I opened for someone that night, and then I remember they they were just happy and like with how it went, and 
meeting everyone, it was just such like a genuine vibe and like I felt like I really fit in there because obviously I was attending for so long. Yeah. So I'm like, I just felt already at home. Yeah. And then- You knew the sound. I knew the sound, knew the room and uh, yeah, it was it was cool. But did you find that often when you were a punter- Yeah. Did you have ideas of what you would have played? Yeah. Yeah? Always. And did you get a chance to play that? Yeah. 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 Um, I started playing as a resident there uh, after that for pretty much three years. And then um, at that point when I started at the Met, uh, I had someone – well, so this was my manager mm-hmm. at the time and um, he was the one that asked me to play the show and to start playing at the Met. But also uh, he runs this agency called Revel- Revelry Agency. Yep. And um, – it's just like a boutique little agency, just like a few guys on there and whatnot. And I really wanted to be a part of it. But, you know, making music is definitely the next step when you want to get to the next step. If you want to be a producer, yeah. 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 But if you want to do more, you know, if yeah. you want to go further, if you and if you if you have the passion for it, do it. And I, I love music. So I was like, this isn't enough. Like, I want to do more. So I went to university. Yeah. And I did a three-year bachelor degree in music programming and production. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, at the time I was also learning Ableton at home and I'd go to uni and I'd be learning on logic and it was just all confusing and I'd be learning about the history of music and just things that I didn't want to learn and I had to do robotics and multimedia and do all these other things and I learned... What what do you mean robotics and multimedia? Like robots? Yeah, so 3D design and all that because it was right. a Bachelor in Multimedia gotcha. majoring in music programming and production because that's all I could do. I didn't want to go to like SAE or TAFE. Like I, I wanted to go to the university and mm-hmm. do a full-time bachelor degree and really yep. see what I can learn because at the time I was a DJ as well. So well, I wanted that balance of a normal life. Yeah, routine. <laughs> I needed routine, routine. yeah. Um, so I did that and then I moved to Melbourne for nine months and I, uh, while I was down there playing shows around Melbourne, I did a mix and mastering course at Abbey Road Institute. Oh, wow. Yeah. That so was So did fun. you stick to the bachelor? Yeah, I finished. Yeah, finished that. I finished, I graduated and Learned then... Learned how to do robotics? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> was learning Ableton on the side? Well, I was doing it at home, yeah. you know, learning logic there, then I'd go home and it was cool because we could take our projects in and show them, but mm. like... It was more like contemporary and bands and stuff like that. And I was just like dirty, dirty house music, Yeah, (laughs) you know, so it wasn't really relevant. So I'd go home and put my work into what I was doing, but it wasn't really what I was learning. It was just, it didn't really have anything to do with the course that I was doing from what I've learned because I... Honestly, I've learned so much more from sitting in studios with people and um, watching tutorials on YouTube. It's a special thing when someone lets you sit in a studio yeah. just to just to hang out yeah. while they're making music. It's the best way to, to learn and for it's, me. It's kind of an art uh, because we're all just trying to figure stuff out and yeah. we're always learning off one another. And it's such an important part of this industry and this uh, game of being able to hang out when one is creating or creating together. Yeah. And, 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 feeling comfortable, um, who would you say, uh, which studio uh, did you sort of first get access to and to hang out in that really sort of um, you learnt a lot right from? Who would you? Um, there was a studio at the Met. Yeah. And uh, Jordan Burns, uh, definitely learnt a lot from him, I remember, because I, when I signed to Revelry mm-hmm. Management, um, Jordan was one of the other guys on the roster. And shout out to Jordan. Yeah, shout out to Jordan. He definitely is so talented. Like, it's insane. He writes so much different music. And, yeah, I was just um, so interested in seeing how he worked as well. And, you know, as well as being friends, it was sick. I mm. could just be like, yo, can we just jump in the studio and you can show me some things? And I'd show him my tracks and I'd, he'd sit there. And so you're already sketching up. 
track yeah, by I'd, this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd show him ideas and like he'd we'd sit in the studio, then he'd say, you know, this is how you'd you'd do this, or I'd probably do this, and mm-hmm. you know, he'd play around and I'd just watch and and then I'd put my input in, and we did that a couple of times. It was really cool, but um, yeah, I feel like you learn a lot from just sitting in the studio with people and all that, but nothing really ever came from any of those because I was still in like a realm of just learning. Mm. But, you know, I took everything we learned into consideration and, you know, I'd go home and be like, oh, that's right, he used that plug-in for that. I can try this with something else, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think with that inspiration and whatnot, I started creating different things and I kind of found my sound and I started um, releasing music on a few uh, labels and stuff like that, like um, Double Up Records and... Oh, Shout out to Matt yeah. Nugent. You? Yeah, for sure. And then um, Club Sweat, I think I had Luna. That was my first release with them on there. And I actually do have my voice on that one in the background. Yeah. And I'm talking, I'm saying, want to dance on repeat. And yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's cool. And that's when I was like, okay, like there's so much I can do with music. There really is. What yeah. do you think um, when you say there's so much you can do with music? What's something, like, do you have an idea of what you want to, like, achieve with music in, in terms of not, uh, what's, what's like, music is being able to make music. It's yeah. like a sacred art that anyone can have access to, but it comes with a responsibility because you're putting out a sound that has a vibe and that vibe or, or that sound affects, can affect the listener because it's energy, it's sound, Right. We use music for different reasons, for different feelings, different situations, right? We can call on a different song or a certain song can remind us of a certain time. Oh, the memories. The memories the and feelings nostalgia. You get, yeah. What is it for you? How would you say, um, you know, what would you like to communicate across music for you? What story do you want to tell to people um, with music? Do you have kind of an idea of that or a feeling? I just... I want people to be able to be happy and feel what I feel when I listen to music. Right. Positive vibes. You could say positive vibes, but more so it's just this feeling in your soul, you know, like no matter how you're feeling, you can put a song on and it can change your mood like that. And I feel like not many people understand that. And when I say that, I don't mean it in like, a, you know, you have to be a DJ to understand it. It's mm. more so... That a song can immediately, it's so powerful that it can t- take you from a dark like any or genre, negative state any into genre. a positive state. Yeah. Yeah. Or opposite. Or Yeah. hundred percent. It's anything. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like music is just so powerful. Like if you're sad, you can put on your favorite song. You're happy. You know, you want to feel sad, put on a sad song. Mm. It's literally mm. just, a, music is a language. Yeah. And I, I can imagine that people that write, a sad song are doing that because that's the expression of their feeling. It's almost like therapy. Yeah. You know, they can put that in into a song, leave it there. Yeah. Like pen to paper. Then they're like, okay, exactly. It's like a journal. Yeah. Um, so they're not trying to do it to make others sad. It's their way of uh, managing their emotions and experiences and bringing it to life as well and creating something beautiful out of it. Mm. But I feel, I don't know with my music, obviously I love writing dance music and, it's hard to, you know, I, I I have a lot of lyrics written down, but at the same time when I get in the studio and if I want to put these lyrics to something, usually I just end up writing <laughs> like more house music and doesn't like really fit in with where I, like sometimes the lyrics don't really work. But at the end of the day, when you're in the studio, you just go with what flows, you know, don't force things. Because mm. when I feel like you force things, it doesn't work. Give me an example of what you mean by forcing things. Like forcing things, like having these lyrics written down and thinking, yep. okay, this is going to be sick in here. And then you just try everything to make it work. You just keep going back on the record. You keep shuffling things around and you keep listening to it. And You're fighting it. Oh, it's the worst. You're your own worst critic anyway. So like it's bad enough sitting on something for ages trying to make it work. I feel like it's, you know, a waste of time find another idea, get some more inspiration and come back two years later. Who knows? That's what I did with my track boots and cats. Mm. I found that um, it's really, you know, it's really interesting you say that, you know, you go in with an intention. Yeah. I'm going to write a track around these lyrics, right? This is yeah. my message. This is what I want to say. I think making music has been the biggest spiritual teacher for me personally because 
it's taught me a everyone can everyone who listens to music can feel if you're being authentic or not because it comes out in the music the perfectionism the imperfectionism the vulnerability right and one of the biggest teachers that's been in my life is making music and that is because you're at one minute pouring out your heart at the next minute you might spend eight hours on an idea but it's not uh it's not any good in in the sense where it doesn't uh, fit the the. It's not Your true. Intention. To, it's not yeah. true to the intention. Yeah. And then in a second, you have to delete that uh, and move on. And you beat yourself up about it. You too. beat yourself up to it because you start going. I spent eight hours on this idea. I want to keep it in the song because I want that time to mean something. <laughs> oh, I know the feeling. Right. Yeah. And then that becomes ego, right? Because. So what if you spent eight hours? But how many times have you spent a lot of time on an idea that hasn't worked? Exactly. But then it's led to something They're that happened lessons. in 10, 15 minutes. They're all lessons. They're all lessons. You have to you learn pour your them. heart out yeah. and emotionally detach once it's out there. Yeah. Constantly, on a daily basis. Yeah. It's therapy. It know? is. And how do you find that now where you're at mm. uh, with with – the music. What one thing I want to say to you is, you know, these lyrics that you're writing down. Who knows? Like, it's only time is going to tell. There'll be times when you're going to call on that little black book of lyrics. They'll come out. They'll come out. They'll come out. You know, and you'll go, ah, that's why I wrote those. Yeah. You know, it might even be a completely different genre at a different stage of your life. Yeah. You don't know for sure, right? So, be cool on yourself on that. Don't beat yourself up too much. But at the same time, if it, you know one one thing that a really wise person said to me. Um, who's like a shaman that gave me this really cool wrist piece is look for the patterns, look for patterns in things and reoccurring themes because in that, in that comes discovery of your essence of who you are. Right. So you definitely have a lot to say and there's definitely a lot of people that can benefit from hearing that and it's working out, you know, approaching those lyrics and that little black book of, of uh, words in maybe different perspectives. Right. Maybe maybe you come back to it and you go, right, I want to write a dance record, but maybe I want to write a dance record that's accompanied with a story. Yeah. And the story, which is like maybe a little poem mm. that fits on a square cover art, is the cover art of the track. Yeah. Right? There's so many ways you can approach this, um, not, just through the, not just through the music. And, you know, you're, you, you talk on your... Um, mixtapes, which I love, by the way, because it's something I do as well, because it humanizes your mix. 100%. Gives you a bit of personality. People, like you said, have a greater chance to connect with you and get a vibe of who you are. Of course. I love to, you know, have a little conversation at the start, especially with that last one I just uploaded, you know. It's been two years and I'm just like, so It's the first one back, guys, loaded with new stuff. Yeah, pretty two much. Two years in the making. I was like, I just started off saying I'm not even going to talk about the C word because, you know. How long's the mix? Uh, the mix is nearly two hours. Wicked. I did did the first hour, then I got um, one of my Pretty. friends. No, this one, um, the recent one is with Jesse. His name is um, Salt. It's spelled S V L T. Shout okay. out to Jesse. Shout he's, out to Salt. Yeah, he's a legend. Um, and he just goes in the last, I don't know, forty five with some solid groove tunes. Nice, yeah, nice. Don't. What um, what's what's on the horizon for you? What are you up to with your production? How are you finding? We've sort of jumping around in the sense that you started hanging out in studios, you did the Abbey Road course. How was that? Yeah, it was cool. I learned a lot about mixing and like mix downs. Was that after you started hanging out in Jordan, was in the studio with Jordan? Oh, yeah. Hanging yeah. out um, with people in the studio when I first started was just me literally just wanting to see how people worked and wasn't really working on my own tracks. Yeah, you know, it yeah. was just learning and being in the studio was just so cool for me, you know, because I was sitting in my bedroom with my laptop, like, I want to be in a studio. Yeah. And then... Um, you did Abbey Road. I did Abbey Road. You went to Melbourne for that. Yeah. Oh, well, I went to Melbourne and then while I was there, I heard about it mm -hmm. and I was like, I went in for like a little induction. I was like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. I, need, I need the routine. <laughs> yeah. What did you pick up? What were some of the things you picked up from that um, experience, the Abbey Road Mix Mastering? Uh, how to do mix downs properly and lots about compression and EQ and stuff like that. But um, at the time, you know, I was playing a lot of shows and I would be flying back to the Gold Coast and Brisbane and stuff like that. So I actually missed the last two weeks about mastering, which was a bummer. Oof. I know. 
Um, but at least you can meet, at least you've got mi- mixing is probably more important than mastering because yeah. the master is a reflection of the mix, yeah. really. And at know? the end of the day, you know, I don't know if many people like, you know, that are starting out know this, but, you know, you usually send your music off to get mixed and mastered anyway on yeah. top of it. Yeah. Do you do your own mix downs now? I mix as I go and yeah. then I do a mix at the end. But yeah. usually, you know, the label will send it off and maybe get another mix or, you know, you can find someone to do, to do like a stem mix and whatnot and then a master on top. But I, I like to mix as I go. Yeah. Because. Well, yeah. I mean, what you're, you're mixing as you go uh, influences the decisions you're going to make next with yeah. the sounds. Yeah. Right. Because if you don't do any mixing. Yeah. You know, while you And then when you, go, when you clean it up, it's like, oh, these don't sound right here. Yeah. So when you're cleaning up the frequencies as you go, I think it's good because you have more space for other things. Yeah. Sound. Sound. Yeah. What's, uh, how much time now are you spending on production each week? Uh, you writing much music? Yeah. I'm yeah. writing a lot of music. Is your studio uh, yeah. set up intact now? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, I spend a lot of time writing actually. Like I pretty much, if I'm at home writing, I'll spend about, Eight hours usually. A day. It, yeah, I love it. Every day. Yeah, if pretty I, much. If I can, yeah. If you, um, we I just had Jansons in the show earlier, and we were speaking about, you know, one thing we believe at Crate is artists love making music, and yeah. if they could have more time making music, they would. Mm-hmm. How much time are you spending on making music versus social media and sort of self promotion stuff? What's the ratio look like for you? Um. I think 50-50, hey. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot, huh? It's a lot. And um, now I'm managing myself again, which is awesome, mm-hmm. um, which means obviously… Power to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which obviously means, you know, the emails and m- more networking and, um, you know, more in control of what I'm up to, I guess, on the social side of things and and who I can um, connect with and all that. So the content side of things is very time consuming when it comes to, you know, Instagram these days. Like I'm not about TikTok, eh? Yeah. Like don't even start me on that. We could talk a whole hour on why we don't like TikTok, oh, but were, give, give me a, just give me a bullet point of what, what doesn't, it, what doesn't sit right with you about TikTok? It has nothing to do with artists and releasing the magic that they make. Mm-hmm. Like, understandable, things go viral and all that and you get sponsorships and people make dances and you become big and famous because of a TikTok, but who wants to be known as a person who's big from TikTok? Mm. For, like, it's artist-wise. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe some people that are artists, sorry, but, yeah, but for personally, you, no. For you, this, is, I, this is all about what you believe. 100%. You know? I love writing music and, you know, if it's going to take me 20 years, so be it. Mm. And that's, I'm just going to stick with that forever. You know, like, yeah, social media, social media, everyone. So you're playing the kind of, you just love what you're doing while you're doing it and you're enjoying the journey. I love my journey so much. Like Mm. I fall in love with it every day and there's no, there's no end destination. There's no end goal because when you have an end goal, what happens when you reach it? Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I love. And I think sometimes if people are so focused on an end goal, they're not enjoying the process. That's what I mean. The process and is the whole journey anyway. Mm-hmm. So if you're focused on something at the end, for one, when you get there, what's next? You know, it's it's now. Everything's happening now. It's crazy the world we live in, huh? Where at the moment for you to do what you love, you have to do something else 50% of the time. Yeah. Which is 50% of the time you're not doing on music, you're yeah. not doing on things that mean dearest to you, but you have to yeah. because to survive. Do you make a, a living off your music sales is, or is most of your income um, from your from your DJing? From DJing. Yeah. I've only ever DJed since I was 17. I mean, I've had, I've helped my mum out with some of like her beauty salon and stuff like that. And I recently just did um, two months working for an audit company because I broke my foot so I couldn't really play any shows. Oh, yeah. And pff, as soon as I was out of the boot, I was like, whoa. Yeah. Uh, I quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was yeah. great. How did you, know, you break your foot? Um, skateboarding sucked. Yeah. Well, actually, you know what? To be honest, this is cool that we're talking about this because I do want to kind of share this little story. Yeah. I broke my foot and like I was super upset like 
thinking, I've never broken a bone in my life. This is going to be a setback right now. And like, I'm just not sure how I feel about not being able to play shows. And, you know, I, I, I go to the gym mm-hmm. and I train and I love being active and taking my dog for runs and skateboarding. And I couldn't do anything in my head, right? In mm-hmm. my head, the first two days. Well, what happened was I broke it. I snapped my foot and then I went home and mom was just like, you've just rolled your ankle. And then one of my girlfriends, Holly, she was like, my dad did the same thing. You need to go to the hospital. So I went to emergency the next day. Yeah, fully broke my foot. (laughs) And I was still like walking on it like that night. And then the next day I was like, oh my God, if I kept walking on that, it could have been so much worse. But I was like, nah, I won't. Anyway. How did that feel to kind of sort of feel like you were kind of tapping out or, you know? In what way? Uh, because you're like, I want to keep staying on my foot, you know, and you're like, you, you had oh, to. I didn't, I didn't know. I like, didn't know. I, like I stepped and then my foot kind of just went to the side and I was like, oh, and then I kept. And that was a break. I kept walking and I was oh, like, oh, okay, what the it. hell? And then I sat down. I was like, it's actually really hurting. And then I stood up and it was fat. Yeah. And so I drove home yeah. and I was like, oh, I'm just going to lay down. Like, because I, I never broken a bone and obviously it was my foot and I was still able to kind of like. Funk move. Yeah. yeah. And like I wasn't like in full pain. Like it was only like when a, I put my foot it's a down. It's pain, isn't it? A broken bone. It didn't hurt. Yeah. It only hurt when I put pressure on it. So oh. I was like, it's not broken. Yeah. And yeah, the doctor was like, this is really bad. I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh, Damn wow. it. Anyway, so the story that I was getting at was I was really upset. Um, I was going through a lot at the time, obviously, with the C word stuff yeah. and like, you know, affected our family hard because we have a restaurant and, um, just like going transitioning through a lot of things at that time with like relationships and friendships and I was just like in a weird headspace Mm. and um yeah I was probably like in a really bad headspace in a sense of just not feeling happy and then I broke my foot and I was like wow like what am I going to do now I have to sit at home with my foot up for like six weeks in my head. You know, it's, it yeah, sounds yeah. like I'm like not sooking, but it's like, I'll grow up. You just broke your foot. But in my head, really music was everything. Like I had oh, I all think- these shows and I thought, okay, I can produce. Then my laptop broke. Oh, of course it did. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So like, I was like, oh my God. So two weeks in, I just, I was like, I, I'm not going to let this get to me. I started going out to like need to freak parties and just like I went out with the moon boot and just, yeah. just started mingling and being around different energy. Like at that time, you know, I kind of stopped being friends with a few different people just because energy I, reasons, energy reasons. Yeah. And like, I wasn't, I wasn't my best self. So I just didn't feel, you know, that I could be my best self around these people at the time. Like I just wasn't happy and like all that. So I started like putting myself in different positions Mm -hmm. and going out and mingling with different people, going out on my own in my moon boot and just, Mm. just wanting to feel different. Mm. And I had the best six weeks of my life. Amazing. And how old are you? Honestly. And so much happened in those six weeks. Like I, the boot came off and I was like, Oh my goodness. I can't even believe I broke my foot. Didn't Mm. even feel like it. Mm. And yeah, I just feel like it's mindset. It's all mindset. What did you think uh, when you came to that conclusion that it's all mindset? Are you now super conscious of your own mindset on a day-to-day? Uh, well, hard to explain, but like a couple years ago, maybe three years ago, I went through something pretty traumatic with like um, an ex-partner and mm-hmm. I guess I um, I did Reiki mm-hmm. and I did a lot of energy healing and stuff like that to heal from what um, I saw and, and I – yeah, I came out a different person and I started focusing on the music more. And from then on, I just did so much with music. You know, I signed some, signed records. So things, some more stuff started happening Everything too, started happening when I locked in, your, when locked. I tapped into my intuition, started reading more books about, you know, my conscious and my subconscious, um, literally listening what's a, to... What's a book you can share that really gave you a bit of an impact that others might get some value out of? Um, okay. So I think like a monk okay. is yep. good. Um, I listen to Jay Shetty pretty much every, every time his podcasts come out. Yeah. Um, he's, Jay Shetty. Jay Shetty. Yep. He's, um, the, probably the world's number one motivational speaker. Okay. And I listen to, um, Alexis, um, I think it's Fernandez. Okay. I think that's, oh, yeah. Uh, I listen to her podcast every week. So you're, you're putting good nutrition in your ears yeah i love listening to podcasts about um you know neurons and like how the brain works and how people think and um 
how to rewire the brain. Um, and uh, there's some other books like how to how to train your subconscious mind. Oh, that sounds juicy. Give me some uh, insight from that one because that's really. It changed my life reading that. Yeah. Yeah. How do I read it three times because I just wanted uh, to have control. Change your subconscious mind. Is that the book? Yeah. Yeah, and you and read it three times. Yeah. I've read so many books on just like... And was this happening prior to the break or after the traumatic kind of relationship? After the traumatic, yeah. I Yeah, I just, I needed to just learn how people worked. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, I was like, this isn't me, you know. Mm. You can't, you can't, um, you can't put anything on yourself that's coming from outer energies. You know what I mean? So... Let's just, it's yeah, hard explain to explain. That, no, we'll get it. Explain that again. So, try, try a few different angles. So when people, it's kind of, it's really hard to explain without going into the story, which I don't want to do because obviously that's not what we're here for, but more so it was to learn about how people think and to wonder why they, they blame you. And it was, it was me always questioning myself. What was it me that right. made whatever yeah. happen? So it was, it was, like more of a self-discovery thing and learning self-love and realizing that um, mind it's it's all about mindset and being able to control your mind and knowing that you cannot control anyone else's emotions by your own. You cannot control anyone else's opinions by your own. So don't, don't even think about that. Mm. What, what comes, let it. What goes, let it, let it flow. It was all, yeah, it was just so much so that I learned. Surrender. Yeah, enjoy the journey, live in the moment and learn more about your own mind because that's the most powerful thing. It That's all, that's what you hear every day. This voice in your head, it's you. Mm. You know, well, sometimes it's not you actually. Sometimes this voice in our head, we think it's us, but it's actually not us in a, in a, in a you know, that doubt. But we, but we have that control to change that. That control to change that. Yeah. Or we have uh, a conscious awareness yeah. to go, hang on, that's not my thoughts. I don't agree with you. Shush. Yeah. And you can do that. And that's 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 what I mean with books and podcasts. They really helped me through so, so is this much. part of your routine now, like yep. uh, weekly, without doubt? Without doubt. I like Exercise to read. Exercise as well? Yeah. Um, meditation, y- yoga. Um, I like to get Reiki every six months, just a bit of energy healing. Yeah, top up. Yeah. Yep. Um, Wicked. Podcasts, is- motivational podcasts. Um, I, all I follow on Instagram is literally like motivational stuff and DJ stuff and a few memes here and there (laughs) and like friends and whatnot, but clear all that negative stuff, things that Mm. don't inspire you. Mm. Why why are you looking at it? You're just filling up your mind with all this toxic stuff that just doesn't, isn't relevant to your own life. And you wonder why people are so hard on themselves and are so upset and so addicted to these things because it's, it's an an addiction. Mm. Social media is an addiction. So fill it with positive things and you watch your life change. Pick up a book and read a chapter a day. It only takes 30 days to to get into a habit. Mm. Do it. Yeah. What's the point on, you know, dabbling in things? If you do it, you pick it up. It becomes a habit. That's what habits are. You. I'm reading the, um, what's the book? Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits. Oh, I've read that. Yeah, I'm in it right habit now. Habit stacking. I, I didn't even bring the book with me because I was yeah. nearly at my How my, cool my is weight. the concept uh, with, <laughs> with the... With a habit, I love it that you nearly at the weight, so you cut the book out. Yeah. Literally, I was like, yeah. "Damn it, what can I bikinis?" Hu- yeah, yeah, and I'll, I was like, "I'm going to have the time of my life. I'll come back and read it, and I'll just listen to podcasts and whatnot." But that's the joy of it, you know. Podcasts are so easy to access, mm. and you can do it while doing anything. Mm. Driving is the best, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, but yeah. So, thank you, by the way, for sharing all of that. I think, I think. In our industry, especially, there's not enough conversations. We talk about mental health, um, but we don't really. A lot of people don't get insight into what is helping and working for other people. There's not enough of those conversations going on. Yeah, and we feel like when we reach out to our industry friends, that it's pretty. It's probably a bit strange to go, "Hey, I need your help. How do you stay positive?" Yeah, right? it's it's a hard topic, right? Mm. And you know, relating back to what I said before about the traumatic Everyone's experience, everyone's trying to project that they're emotionally perfect and stable. Yeah. Emotionally, you it's know? not like that, though. It's not like that's that. why people find because it so hard to reach out because they think, "Oh, everyone's got the perfect life." Well, also as an artist and producer, the last thing we want to do is project negative vibes if yeah. we're going through a bad time. Yeah. So we suck it up. Yeah. And we don't say anything. Yeah. But at the same time. We, we need, it's probably the, the, the most important time we need to reconnect, yeah. recalibrate, refresh. 
And so I really appreciate you talking about this stuff. I think we need to talk about it more in our industry. It's actually... We need to share more of what works, yeah. you know, because uh, you're the first, our first female guest, by the way, on Crate, so it's an honour. And what an honour and what a, what a standard you're setting, you know, musical uh, bachelor multimedia degree, yeah. right? Self-teaching Ableton, Abbey Road mixing and mastering under your belt, radio school. I mean, there's a lot of guys I know in the industry that haven't done any of that, yeah. right, that are in this industry that have, have been quite successful and you've really put in the work and you've set a foundation for yourself. Yeah. And that's inspiring, you know, and you should feel proud Thanks. about that. No, that's good to hear. It's nice you know? to hear that because it's um, sometimes, you know, I don't even think about what I've done mm. because I'm just literally living in the moment. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I've done all of that. Yeah. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. And what you're, we're seeing a bit of a pattern with the things you were doing, even from singing with your mum earlier on yeah. to hosting the Disney show, right? <laughs> sure. the theoretical Disney show to then talking to you. Everything's connected, right? Yeah, of course This is, is who you are. Yeah. You're made for this. Yeah. And I think now it feels like you're really going to get stuck into the production. Yeah. Right? I just keep evolving and that's, mm. it's, it's so fun. And now you're doing, so you're spending about 50 percent of your time give or take on social media well yep. yeah now managing myself self, again yeah, yeah. with that self-management aspect yeah. which you're loving i absolutely i did it for because you're doing years. things how you want to do it yeah and, that, and then you've got the other 50 percent on your uh production side yeah what's what's your system with uh writing music how many tracks are you sort of writing at a time how, how many are you sending so i have a um record deal with club sweat uh Wicked. we have five tracks and five tracks after if they want to continue. Um, what track are you up to now? With uh, released wise, with with their deal, or yeah. how many I've released? How many have you released on Club Sweat with this deal? Oh, with this deal, um, one, and okay. it was last. So I, saw, I, I signed last year. Okay, um, so during the pandemic. Yeah, signed. during the C word. Sorry. Yeah. 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 The CP word, either one. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, uh, released a uh, drip a couple months. Oh no maybe eight months ago now. How did that happen? How did you uh, manage to get on what I think is one of the best best, uh, dance labels in Oz, you know? They are, hands down. Awesome guys there. Shout out to Danny. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to all of them. Yeah, shout out to all of them. Shout out to everyone. Shout out to Matt. Big big dog Matt, who's definitely elevating his consciousness. Yeah. Very, very inspirational guy. Very smart guy. Very. Very switched on. uh, So, yeah, how did that first release come about? What's the story in uh, well, I released Luna. Mm-hmm. That was my first track on Club Sweat. And mm-hmm. then I released another one called Boots and Cats. And then I did a remix for Mark Maxwell. Oh, Marky. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, yeah, they offered me a contract and it's like, yes. And how did you, so Luna was the first one? Luna was the first one. And then. How did that happen though? Did you just send it to them as a demo? Did Yeah, know? like just writing for so long and just like writing different how many tracks have you that's a really good point when you said writing for so long because i think a lot of producers they try to just write one track for a label where it's sometimes no. it might be track 80 yeah so that, that starts things start happening for you with where my, was it for you with my um management that i had i had a music mentor he was great and um you know with, i'd send him things back and forth and he'd always be giving Who's me the, are we allowed to re- reveal who that is <laughs> you don't have to. If you I don't, don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not with them anymore. But okay. um, like we're it's they, they were great guys, and yep. you know they helped me a lot. Like I learned so much. But mentorship, very yeah, important. mentorship. Always calling, and he'd be like, you know, this is not, um, this doesn't work, or this and that. He'd send me so an he's idea. A and Ring you. Yeah, mm-hmm. all the time because obviously, like I I was DJing and still making my way into the music scene. So it was just constant feedback, did constant that, did feedback. You think that, that- uh, accelerated your development because you're getting that honest feedback. You're yeah. Like, okay, that's, that's yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. And um, how many tracks were you, ideas were you sending a week? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd write so many ideas, but you know, they were just never good enough. And like, I know that, like it took a lot. You need the feedback, right? To say, yeah. where do I take it from yeah. here? What, what am I doing wrong? What's yeah. missing? Exactly. And I'll do the work. Exactly. And I, you know, there was always an option there. Many people were like, you know, get ghost produced, just, we just pay someone and we'll... That G word mm. is scarier than the C word in our industry. Oh, well, get this right. So, you know, I've had people always, you know, approach me and say, you know, you'd make it if we can just get you to buy, you know, a song from mm. someone and just put your name on it. And Can we can we just talk about... So I actually wrote a song, haven't released it, 
It's called Artist Sacrilege and I sample Macy Oplex in an interview saying, fuck artists that don't write their own music. Mm. And I went, hang on, this is a bit, this is a bit emo hater. Um, and then he kind of he kinda says, uh, there's a lot of this going on right now and – uh, but I do it too. He's saying he's, he's ghost producing for some people, but because the art people come up with the idea. But at the end of the day, this is where I want you to really speak up on yeah. this issue because this is. And a, I want to. This is a. This is. This is. You know. You. You mentioned earlier about how you're putting in the time, and you don't care if it happens for you in twenty years because we're talking about the journey because that's giving you back the fulfillment and the nourishment. Yeah. Right, it feels good. It feels good putting in the work and getting rewarded for and it. And so, some people will see you as a marketable yeah. person, mm -hmm. right? And they're suggesting to take that shortcut. Take the shortcut, and let's just do it like this. And yeah, you know, it's to me. Obviously, I love what I do, so it doesn't work like that. But like ghostwriting and stuff at the start, it was never an option. And every time someone said it and wanted me to do that. No, 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 no. And they did, couldn't understand why. And I never wanted to do that. Well, but now you understand no, why, but, folks. Yeah, but honestly, right, being with my management and all that, obviously I had an A&R, I had a music mentor, but that's that's feedback, you know, that's mm. working with someone. Mm. And, um, you know, I always was so set on writing my own stuff and there was always so much input you know, let's just get someone else to finish it for you. Let's get this and that. Nope, nope, nope. You know, like, of course I had help with feedback and, yeah, um, you know, mixing and stuff like that and, you know, helped with, with ideas from my music mentor and all that. But, you know, I, I just kept grinding and grinding and get, I would send about 10 tracks every now and then to my management and, you know. What's every now and then, like three, four months, two yeah, weeks? Yeah, uh, every couple months. Every couple months, yeah. Uh, you know, five so to you, ten. you'd send in blocks, chunks? Chunks, ideas, sometimes finished. In my head, I thought that it was sick. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, listening back now, I'm like, you're, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> this is interesting. Now that you have hindsight under your belt and you can listen back to some of your tracks, you know that what's finished and what's not. Is that true? Yeah, but yeah. it's also good because I go back to old tracks and I put in everything them. I've learned. Yes. But see, yes. this is something back to the ghostwriting thing. I just want to say like I was so I, – I want to make it the right way and I would never be able to forgive myself if I bought music off people and put my name on it and mm. said I did that. If I could swear, I'd be like, mm. yeah. you know. You can swear. Well, oh, fuck that. Yeah, fuck that. Are you kidding? Like anyway, every – not everyone, people do it. And mm. I don't like whatever. Mm. That's that's what you want to do. But that's how much I love what I do. But now, right, I'm so confident after going to... Putting in the work. Putting in the work, getting a degree and learning, like going to a university and sitting there and learning the ins and outs, even though like it was very hard at the time. I look back and I'm like, I've done that. Now I'm happy to collaborate with people and work with people. But back then it was just not an option for me because I didn't, I wanted to learn. Mm. And, you know... Sending, like, I mean, releasing tracks that aren't done by me at all, I would never be able to be fulfilled in this mm. industry. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting thing because a lot of producers do it because out of necessity because they make money. Well, not, know, not even that. They, 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 they get known and then they can yeah. make money from shows. See, I started DJing first. Mm. I'm happy. I, you know, that's my job. So now the music, why would I rush that? Yeah. Don't that, rush. No way. And so now I'm like, I'm down to collab with any other people in the studio. Because I don't, I don't see it as own. ghost writing. Yeah. You know, I, if I'm going to jump in the studio with someone, it's like we can actually, I can share all the knowledge I know and I'm learning off someone who might not know things that. You know, it's so, it's so funny because I completely agree with you. And it's funny because I have the same belief. Uh, I wanted to race to get to an ability where I could hold my own in the studio and contribute. That's yep. it. That's it. That's you know. And then nice, we can know, relate with that. You know that because then you feel like you're bringing something to the table. A hundred percent. Um, but until then, sit by your own. Get study, your mentors. Study. Always learn get a mentor. Tutorials. I had a mentor, Paul Rogers. Um, shout out to him. That's where it all started happening. I think it was my hundredth song. Yeah. That then he said. You're ready, and then I sent that to Matt, a double up, and that was my first solo release. Yeah, dope. Yeah, yeah, cool. So we've got a similar path going on here, and it's the long game, but it's the rewarding game. Yeah, and I think for you, you've got this time now, right? Yeah. What's next for you? What are some of the labels? What are some of the artists now where we're at right now in this point in time that are really inspiring you? Mm. That uh, 
and that 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 is like having an influence on your sound. Where would you say you're at now? What's next for you? What can we start expecting? I mean, you said you've, there's a few more releases that you can do for Club Sweat. Yeah. So I've got four more. And are these kind of singles? Yeah, singles. Yeah. I've actually nearly finished the next one. And um, Wongo is actually helping me, helping me mix this one. Wicked. Yeah. yeah. So dope. Bit he of a whiz. so talented. Yeah. Um, but that's what I mean. Like, you know, you've got, if you've got people around you that are great at what they do, let's work. Yeah. The more you work with people, the more you learn. And yeah, so my music mentor, I don't know if you know Micah Freeman. No, I don't know. Um, he was with Aston Shuffle. Okay, yeah. And yeah, so yeah. he definitely taught me so much. And now like I'm just like stoked. Anyone that wants to jump in the studio, I'm like, let's go. Yeah. But yeah, the next releases and stuff like that, I'm just going to just. What's this inspiration, the, this next one that Wongo is helping you mix? Uh, uh, what's the inspiration? What's the track called firstly? Well, the title was Time. Yep. Working title, time. Yeah, yeah. whip, whip. B6, <laughs> B21. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, I'm actually also doing a remix for uh, Steve Hart as well. Um, and I'm just kind of going down that underground, like hopefully I can get a good rolling baseline with it. I'm getting a bit of inspiration being here. So I'm like, can't wait to go home and Wicked. finish it off but that's due soon so many deadlines at the moment i'm like i try not to think about it yeah one day at a time huh yeah but what, what's one of your dream labels that you want to get signed let's put it out okay there. okay let's put it out there um definitely knee deep and yeah. solar repopulate mars south of saturn and okay lee foss and, and solid grooves that, that daily if you're here and yeah and i have to get on john summit's rec yeah. record label he's dope yeah yeah, so yeah, that's the sound that I'm loving at the moment, and like shout out to Dom Dollar, he's killing it at the moment. He's yeah, like he really is part of the what Sweat Fam, and I see that, and I'm like, you know, it's and, so and inspiring. The, and seeing to Torrin with him as well, so yeah. And Aussie Airwolf, he's yeah. that new track he just signed with um Trick. Yeah, the Don't Hurt Me Baby, is it? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's <laughs> dope. It just came out, and they've been thrashing it like at all the festivals. It's sick. We could. We have such like a great group of people in Australia that are killing it. If you could um, talk, to give advice to, we haven't spoken about gender and, you know, you're the first female on our show and it's an honour and we just had a bit of a summary about all the hard work you've put in, all the things you've achieved. How hard is it being uh, a, a female in the in a kind of a male-dominated industry? And what? How did you find it? How did you sort of figure out how to hold your own and what what kind of advice can you give to other women out there that want that love the music that don't have you know that want to be sort of respected for them being themselves you know and treated as equals see to me that question is just not something that phases me anymore because at the end of the day if you've got it in you, you're going to make it no matter what. Doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter. But, you know, when I was starting out and everything, I was always like, oh, it's so hard being a female in the industry. But it is true. Mm. You know, f people overlook females sometimes. And I think it's because it is such a male-dominated industry. But it it will come through. It will shine through no matter who you are and what you want to be called and what gender you go by and mm. whatnot. It doesn't matter. Mm. It does not matter at the end of the day. It matters about what's in here and it matters about your passion for it. And it will show if, if you're not real about it, period, you know, female or not, it doesn't. To me, I know you want the advice on that, but my advice is just for everyone, just keep doing what you're doing. And if it's real, it will show through. That's it. As I said, ghost producing, female, all this stuff comes in and it's just like it gets so nitpicking about it and it people want to say how it's so male dominated i do it is, it is i agree with that but at the end of the day if you're passionate it hasn't it, been an issue no nah. right i mean it's hard people talk a lot of shit people yeah. yeah it's hard but people know that people can people can see the energy that outshines that yeah I think that I don't think, let it get you down. Just uh, keep going. Keep keep going. Don't give up. Question to you: The people that talk shit are they the people that really matter to your career? No. There you go. Bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> and so, what's the recap on g women that uh, oh. want to you know sort of want to follow your path? Yeah. So if I, I honestly think don't don't listen to anyone but yourself and stay you know, true to you. Stay true to you and you know. 
don't worry about what people say about, you know, Instagram and things like that. And don't worry too much about how you portray yourself. Because as I said, if it's real, it doesn't matter what you wear, what you do. At the same time, I used to be like, oh, you know, I don't want to wear this. I don't want to do that. I can't believe someone's telling me that I need to dress like this or I can't believe Wait, someone's... someone's telling you that you need to dress a certain way? Yeah, back in the day, I um, there was this thing in this contract with this agency that wanted me to be with them and they were like, you have to wear short shorts and you have to do this. I was like, Fuck That's in that. the contract? No, well, in the contract, it was, it was more so saying like, yeah. you know... Guidelines. Guidelines. And all that, but then on the phone and stuff, I was like, "What? What do you mean? Oh, yeah. well, this is what we recommend. Like, you, you should shop here." Telling wow. me like where to shop, and I'm like, "Um, I'm not signing this fucking thing." So, did you end up signing it? No, are you kidding? Yeah, girl. Yeah. Are you kidding? No way. And this is what I mean and by like, I've never seen a contract like that for a guy. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there probably might be some out there for that 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 those agencies need men to appear a certain way too. But yeah. it's 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 so not about the music then. Yeah. And at, at the end of the day, I definitely feel like people can still do what they want to do. You know, like here I'm in Bali, I'm in my bikini, I'm having the best time of my life. But people know who I am because how I portray myself, I'm real and I'm honest and I'm open about everything. And what you wear has nothing to do with the music. As I say, like being a female. Just wear comfortable shit because if you're sweating <laughs> playing a long set, right? Yeah, like yeah. literally the warehouse, sweating yeah. bullets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like being a female, yeah, it. I I can understand if girls are overwhelmed and it's, it's, it's risky, you know. People will approach you and you can get – in yourself in a really bad situation i recommend if you're if you do get picked up by certain people when it comes to contracts and management and labels get a lawyer mm -hmm. you need like invest in yourself this if you love it and you want it to be your career and do what's right mm. you know i've spent so much money on lawyers just to make sure just to be safe mm. you know what i mean i've spent money on studying i've st you, you know, it's all real to me. So my advice is just be real for you. And be whatever real. that is will get you wherever you want to go, period. Well, I think on that, yeah. what a way to wrap that up. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being on The Crate Show. Really, really appreciate having you here. Just one more recap. When can we expect your next track to come out? Uh, give or take. We'll just give I hope August. August. All okay. right, guys, you heard it here, folks. August. Next track coming out on Club Sweat. Uh, no definitive date, but we'll have all your socials and the thing. Yes. Yeah. And you. remixes. And remixes. And they're all coming out. This is it. All right. It's ready to go. Thank you so much for popping to Bali. Thank you. Escape and oh, stuff. I'll be back. Absolutely, you will.